emotions always run high when a national championship is at stake. Few endeavors in these young people's lives can match the pride felt for scoring points for their school. Arkansas again comes in the meet's favorite. However, sprinter Tyson Gay is nursing an injury, and fellow sprinter Wallace Spearman will need to improve on last year's performance to win. Michigan brings a dominating distance duo of Nate Brannon and Olympian Nick Willis. Who will prevail? LSU won both men's and women's crowns last year, but the 40th championship is wide open. From the Randall Tyson Track Center, the mecca for indoor track and field in the U.S. on the campus of the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville, it's the 40th anniversary of the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships. So grab a hot dog and a bag of popcorn, walk into this capacity crowd, sit down and root for your favorite team. We're anticipating a tight 14 battle for the women's team title between Stanford, Tennessee, Florida, and defending champion LSU. Candace Scott, the double throwing threat for Florida. Tiana Madison, who can score in the long jump and sprints for Tennessee. Ariana Lambe, one of many distant stars for the Lady Cardinal. And Hazel Ann Regis, the two-time Olympian from Grenada for the Lady Tigers of LSU. On the men's side, it's looking like the host Arkansas Razorbacks. Their attack is well balanced, and even the loss of sprinter Tyson Gay may not be enough to derail them from winning their 18th indoor title and their 40th overall. Wallace Spearman appears unstoppable in the 200, and Saeed Ahmed will be part of a memorable men's mile. For more on the Tyson Gay situation, let's go to our infield reporter, Leslie Maxey. Thanks, Dwight. We have here with us Tyson Gay. Tyson, everyone was looking forward to seeing you run today, but I understand a decision has been made. Um, actually, yesterday, um... My coach pulled me from the meet. He said it's best. I mean, I'm a senior. I wanted to help my team out, but he said it's best to help me for outdoor season. You know, I have a future to look forward to, you know. So um, he came up with the decision yesterday and said, um, I've done some starts. I felt good, but um, he said I looked a little sluggish. So he made, he said his gut feeling decision was to pull me from the meet. How did this week leading up to the meet look for you as far as therapy and whatnot? Um, I would get up every morning at 7.30 and I would ice, I would heat, I would stretch, I would take care of my legs. And um, I mean, I would start to jog, hit the treadmill in the morning. I was working really hard, but um, he said just technically wise, I was sluggish and I wasn't too sharp, but I was ready to run. It sounds like you're comfortable with the, with the uh, decision, so thanks for, thanks for joining us and we'll look forward to seeing you in the outdoors. Okay, Dwight? With Tyson Gay out of the meet, a lot of pressure falls on his teammate, Wallace Spearman, in the men's 200-meter dash. You might notice that he has the American record and collegiate and meet records for this uh, race by virtue of the fact that he ran them in his heat earlier today. There he is on the inside, Wallace Spearman in lane three. Not the best lane that he could be running in, but certainly good enough. Look at how he keeps his form and just flies along. Tall, angular, just has had a terrific couple of years down here at Arkansas, and his dad was also a star in 1984 in this team. And just an amazing, amazing performance. America's loaded with high, high quality sprinters. I don't know if I've ever seen such depth among freshmen and sophomores. Right. One freshman and three sophomores in this final, Xavier Carter, the freshman at LSU, but this is the man, Wallace Spearman Jr. from the University of Arkansas, and he's been hot all season. He won the NCAA Outdoor 200 last year. They need points from him because of Tyson Gay not competing at all due to that injury. He should win. I mean, he's the odds-on favorite. Keep an eye on him. Red and white right there in lane five. The higher in the bank, I think the, the more advantage you have by maybe a tenth of a second at least, it will help you. Um, and he was on the inside. It was amazing what he did from lane three. I mean, it, that is not a good lane, a 200-meter running. You want to be way up in the bank. The top of the bank that you see there is five feet off the ground, so you get a terrific slingshot effect. The higher on the turn you are, running the 200 meters. It's really an unfair advantage. Only one athlete in history has run faster than Wallace Spearman did earlier today. Frank Fredericks of Namibia, former world champion and many-time Olympic medalist, has three times faster than Spearman. But all eyes on him for the points right here. That's what it's about. They've got to beat 2037 for the title. Cleanly. Wallace Spearman has one man to draw off it on the outside. Not a bad runner, Karan Clement. And look at Spearman fly. He's already made up the stagger and he's blowing the field away. And then Dominic Peter.
Peterson down in Arizona State, 20.09. History has been corrected to 2010. That is a tie for the second fastest time in history. The track that the only 200 meters in history was run faster on is in France and Levin. And it is considered faster than this track with better banking and more gradual turns. This is a sensational performance by this young man who has just turned 20 years of age. Partisan crowd breaks into a rendition of Vu Pig Sui. Take a look at this from start to finish. He is not a great starter. He gets out and he really gets rolling. That's his characteristic. Look at the back stretch coming off that high turn. And he's already made up the stagger on a tremendous runner to his outside. Look at the, the movement off the turn. He doesn't lose his form. He holds. Look at the arm action. You youngsters out there have said it before. Powers himself right through the finish. Doesn't even dip. It still runs 20.1 seconds. What a future for Wallace Spearman. He sprinted over to our Leslie Maxey. Wallace, certainly you have the home court advantage here, but what is it about this track specifically that allows you to run so fast? I guess, you know, being at home, you know, having my fans here, family, you know, training every day, it's a fast track. Feels training every day. I talked to a little bird. He said you actually were telling guys in practice to get up. Has that made the difference for you this year? Uh, not really. I mean, I had a fall this year that helped a lot. And just working with Coach Bromley and Tyson. Omar Brown. Well, I want to go for a prediction here. Going outdoors, translate this time for me. I have no idea. I don't know time. <laughs> really fast. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I don't know if they'll be calling him Junior anymore. Wallace Spearman, the sophomore from Arkansas, sets two collegiate and American records in an hour and a half, exulting the hometown crowd and overshadowing two outstanding performances in second and third place by Walter Dix and Rodney Martin. Can LSU senior Hazel Ann Regis make the first strike for the Lady Tigers? The women's 200 is next. Fourth time in the finals of this event. Great, Khalid, a great high school runner, and she's gone on to great success in college under Coach Curtis Fry, who has high hopes for her in this race, he told me. But LSU's chance is really starting right here with this lady, Hazel Ann Regis, the senior from Grenada. The LSU Lady Tigers really counting on her for some points. Two-time Olympian, terrific at 400 meters and superb at this event, too. Has a slight advantage over the rest of the field, being on the outside is Regis, so she gets the benefit of the high start and rocketing down that straightaway. She's got great stamina over the last 60 meters of this race because of her 400 meter running. So it's all about speed here. Hazel Ann Regis of LSU, the senior, really team counting on her to win this race. She did not have the fastest time in the heats though. 22.91 by Fana Ashby of Auburn and from Trinidad and Tobago Islands is she, an Olympian for her country in Athens set the fastest collegiate time in the heat before this. 22.91 is the time these ladies have to beat to get an NCAA title. You look at Regis on the outside. Set. And it's a clean start. Whipple, Solomon, Bryce, and Regis. And Hazel and Regis out well in lane six. But look at Tremedia Bryce making a move on the backstretch. It's Bryce, the senior from Texas Southern, making up the stagger and more. Does Regis have enough to come back on her? Also, it is Whipple moving well in lane three, but it is all Tremedia Bryce. A big surprise. She had the fastest time in the heat, but few thought it would hold up in the final, and Bryce upsets Hazel and Regis in the women's 200. The time, 22.90 seconds. This is the seeded heat of the two heats that were run. She wins the NCAA title, Dwight, by one one-hundredth of a second over Fanna Ashby of Auburn, who ran in the other heat. And what an incredible move Bryce made on that backstretch as we were really focused on Hazel Ann Regis from LSU. That was the ISO slow motion on Bryce and on, on Regis, and look who comes into the picture, to media Bryce. Amazing performance by Bryce here. She's improved indoors this year by four tenths of one second. Huge improvement for the Texas Southern senior as Regis gets up for second in this seated heat. That 400 meter speed getting her to the second place finish in this heat. But Bryce wins the title by 1 100th over Fanna Ashby and then Courtney Champion of Tennessee gets some much needed points for the Lady Vols.
When we return to Fayetteville, the women's 60-meter hurdles featuring USC senior Ginny Powell. Here we go. The American record the held final. by the great Gail Devers and Perita Felician of Canada set the meet record here three years ago. This, this is how they'll line up. Dominic Darden is uh, the great Tony Darden, his daughter from uh, back in the 70s and 80s, one of the great quarter milers, but the race is really going to be in the middle of the track, Larry, for the USC, are, Virginia Powell. She did, Dwight. She stepped up very, very well. Virginia Powell, a former high school basketball player and track athlete out of the Seattle, Washington area, a junior at Southern Cal, and she ran the fastest time by an American this year in this event, 7.94 seconds in the heat. And this might be her major competition next to her. This is Priscilla. Lopes from Canada and who was an Olympian for Canada in Athens and was the defending champ is the defending champion in this event. Also entered in the sprints for a powerful athlete. Ran her personal best time in winning that NCAA title here last year. But Ginny Powell, also a good sprinter, she won the Pac-10 100 meter title in 2004 as a sophomore. Dwight in her heat, the woman from Southern Cal in the middle of the track there in white, the taller woman, 5'10". Got out very well, controlled things right from the beginning, and Lopes was in her heat, and she really scorched her in that heat, winning by six one-hundredths of a second. In this event, that's measurable. Lopes matched her season best of eight flat in the heats. So it's Powell in four, for the best time by a collegian or an American this year, and then the defending champion on her left in lane three. Priscilla Lopes of Nebraska. And it's a clean start. Good start for Ginny Powell. Ginny Powell with her first hurdle first, and she's running away with it from the field. It's Ginny Powell. Lopes is trying to catch her. She won't. And it's Virginia Powell of USC who will win the NCAA 60 meter hurdle title over the defending champion, Priscilla Lopes of Nebraska. 7.97 seconds unofficially. And what amazed me here is I think she got the jump on everybody else coming out of the blocks, and she's the tallest athlete at 5'10". Often that's hard to do. Watch as she goes by our slow motion camera here. She's got a little lead on everybody. Look at that. She's perhaps five or six inches out in the field by the first hurdle. She maintains that margin and cranks right to the finish line. Congratulations to Southern Cal and Virginia Powell. And she is with our Leslie Maxey. All right, Jenny Powell, big win for you. First national championship, but you're also running very well outdoors. What is it, what has changed this year for you technically? <laughs> we got a new coach and um, we've been doing a lot more hurdling like every day. And the um, conditioning and practices have just changed. So we're really focusing on technique. And that's a now, as you uh, look at your season coming up, what things are you going to be concentrating on? What can we look for from you? Uh, concentrating on breaking 13. So my goal is to get into the 12s consistently and hopefully get an outdoor title too. Back upstairs. All right, Leslie. Well, Ginny Powell, because of the weather in Southern California, has already run 13. What an example. Okay, Jason, hang your, bent, hang your leg over as it is bent and then pop your trail with it. Bent leg, move. Boom, on the ground quick. All right, Jason, walk back and show uh, a straight lead leg and with your chest falling backwards. Kick at it, kick at it. Okay, now bent the chest up and over your knee. Boom, do it again. Boom, okay. <laughs> Those are the difference. And the best of all, we always keep the shoes on. Well, obviously we can see what the advantages are there. So if you are a hurdler now, you can take a look at your technique in comparison to uh, Mr. Richardson's. And if you're a spectator, you have a little inside tip. All right, Coach, thanks a lot for participating in our Home Depot coaching clinic today. American record held by Greg Foster. That's an old one. NCAA meet record, a little bit more recent. Terrence Trammell, the double silver medalist in the 110 hurdles at the last two Olympic Games. Here's how they will line up. And as normally is the case, the race should be in the middle of the track. Josh Walker, Antoine Hicks, Jason Richardson, all very evenly matched. As we look at lane four, the senior from Florida, Josh Walker. Walker, as Dwight has mentioned, is the senior who won his heat in 7.69 seconds and you might ask as Dwight mentioned why did they get the center of the track these men and you're looking at Antoine Hicks because they ran the fastest times in the heats athletes don't like to be the bookends at the end of the track they like to feel others around them Hicks is the defending indoor champion and there is Jason Richardson who you saw featured in our little special 
Coach Curtis Fry has him under his tutelage as he did Alan Johnson and Melissa Morris and Howard, Olympic medalists in the hurdle race. He is just a freshman and was the outstanding high school male track and field athlete last year. Antoine Hicks, the world junior champion three years ago for the United States, and that signifies junior basically being a teenager. And they have a, a very serious world championships in the sport of track and field uh, for really the equivalent of high school plus athletes plus one year. And Richardson out well. It's Richardson, but also it is Selma Nuri. They have Notre Dame looking good, but now Hicks. Wow. That was some race. It looks like Hicks may have just gotten him off the last hurdle, but Salem Nuruddin of Notre Dame looked great through the middle of the race, and it is Hicks, 7.64 wins a very competitive men's hurdles final. Dwight, that equals the fastest time run by a collegiate in America this year. Now watch Walker in the orange right now. Important points here for Coach Mouse Holloway, his uh, Florida team here, and it is late stage, subtle movements. Look at how even they are. They look like male rockets going to the finish line and the six foot two angular movements to the finish line and a great lean by the man on the left Antoine Hicks the defending indoor champion brings home another gold medal for Ole Miss a very tight finish and the winner is down with Leslie Maxey and Antoine Hicks, you run 2004, now 2005. Looked like you had a little bit of a shaky start, but you pulled it out of the finish. Is that an accurate assessment? Yeah, uh, felt a little slow in the beginning. I know I wasn't running. I had to get it together. I, I ran 76 forward. It felt okay, though. I, I wanted to run a little faster, but I'll take that for today. Congratulations. Thank you. So Antoine Hicks repeats as champion in the hurdles. Eight points for Florida, thanks to Josh Walker. And the freshman from South Carolina gets third. Nate Brannon of Michigan now in fourth. He qualified in the 800 earlier. And here comes Arkansas. That's Saeed Ahmed, who has run brilliantly for them here in his first couple of years at school, a 357 miler. Came out of Massachusetts, originally his family's from Somalia, and he's been a very solid mainstay for John McDonald's distance running core here, and UCLA is under siege up in front. But let's remember, Saeed Ahmed had to qualify in the mile earlier, so he doesn't have exactly fresh legs, but certainly he's a better miler on paper than is John Rankin of UCLA. Very true, and that's a good point, uh, to, uh, Dwight. What the problems we're having here is there's perhaps no track meet in America where the athletes are called upon to do more in two days than the NCAA Indoor Championships. Men's distance medley final, John Rankin, the senior from UCLA on the 1600 and final meter leg of this distance medley relay, leading over, only so slightly, over Said Ahmed of Arkansas. And then in third, that is Nate Brannon of Michigan trying to pull up the distance, but both Brannon and Ahmed have run races earlier today. Right, let's bring everybody up to speed. The first uh, 1,200 meters of this race, the equivalent of three quarters of a mile. Adam Perkins led for Arkansas in two minutes, 56 seconds. A 46-7 for a meter run by Terry Gadsden kept the lead. UCLA took it on the third exchange at the 800 meters, and in a 56.7 second first 400 meters for that man, Nate Brannon, who has the second fastest mile indoors ever run, 355-1. He's already qualified and run earlier today as Saeed Ahmed has, who's taken the lead for Ahmed. So they're a little tired here. Tactics would dictate that they would like a slow pace. And if you're Coach Art Venegas, you're telling John Rankin, hey, you're running against two guys who've already run qualifying races today. Make them run. So it is Saeed Ahmed of Arkansas leading over John Rankin of UCLA. Nate Brannon slowly but surely reeling them in. He has plenty of time. Smart runner from Canada. 157 for Brannon for Michigan. But I'll tell you, the points are needed by the University of Arkansas in the lead. They, they had a bad time of it in the 5,000 meters as their two runners, Joseph Pat Boyd, and Peter Koske did not wind up scoring many points at all, and Tyson Gay was ruled too injured to be able to compete. They lost many points in the 60 and the 200 meters. Very important for Arkansas going after their 18th indoor title here. Ahmed holding on to the lead. 
as we come up with just a couple of laps to go. But what, how typical of a John McDonald Arkansas team that they have the depth that they can lose a Tyson Gay, they can do poorly in the 5,000, but someone is always there to pick up the slack. Wallace Spearman sets two American records in the 200, and now Saeed Ahmed, after qualifying in the mile, comes back and is anchoring the distance medley relay. But the story is, look at how little distance there is now between Nate Brannon and second place. Brannon, tough as nails. And will he have a kick left? That's the amazing thing. He is perfectly confident of his kick with one lap to go. 200 meters to go. Michigan in third. UCLA in second. Saeed Ahmed has got the lead right now. Michigan won the women's distance medley. Can the men do it now? Down to 100 meters to go. John Rankin of UCLA is done. Now it's Nate Brand against Saeed Ahmed. Ahmed has the advantage. He's in his house. Can Ahmed hold him off? It's Saeed Ahmed for Arkansas with 50 meters to go. Here comes Nate Brand, the diminutive Canadian. Can he hold him off? Yes! Ahmed smartly starts to drift out into lane two and three. And maybe coach Ron Warhurst of Michigan might have something to say about that later. But for now, it is Arkansas, the winner of the men's distance medley relay. And just as importantly, 10 huge points for the Razorbacks. Got the, got the race for Ahmed, the young man whose family in 1995 left Somalia, came to the United States, sponsored by their grandparents. When he got to the United States, Saeed Ahmed, the man in the league, couldn't speak English. Watch him begin to drift into lane two. He's got his eye on him. He's drifting. He did not. The question will be, did he impede the finishing stretch run of Nate Brandon? There may be a protest here. He was close to impeding, and that could be a 50-50 decision. He didn't cut him off, but he did drift out, and he may have impeded him on such a close finish. We'll have to see. Nine minutes and 30 seconds plus for this terrific, terrific distance medley relay race. Larry, Larry, there is a group of officials meeting down here, and I think I heard someone say that a disqualification may be in the offing. I'll keep you posted. Well, I've got to tell you, if I'm uh, Ron Warhurst, the coach at Michigan, I'm definitely going to put in a protest for that. Uh, winner or lose, he's got to at least give it a try for his kids because that would mean the Michigan would get 10 and Arkansas would get nothing. But while we wait for that decision to be made, let's take a look at the highlight of some field events that were contested earlier. In the men's pole vault, it was sophomore Tommy Skipper of the University of Oregon, who was runner-up here last year but won the outdoor title, didn't even enter the competition until the bar got to 18 feet, a half inch, and he cleared easily, went on to jump 18, four and a half, missed three times at 19 feet, a quarter inch, and the book on him is a big hip height, but boy, he just misses on the way down. He jumped 18-3 in high school, a high school record, and he wins it here over Ray Scotton and Paul Jensik. The men's long jump was a bit of a surprise as the junior from Indiana, Eric Wilson, recorded a lifetime best indoors and out. He was not ranked among the best 10 indoors or outdoors long jumpers in the United States last year, but that should not be the case this year. 26 feet, 9 and 3 quarters of an inch on his final jump, and he takes home the victory and 10 big points for Indiana. And the 35-pound weight throw, it was on paper, a huge advantage for this man, Spirit on Julian, the junior from Virginia Tech. He was better by five feet than the second best thrower coming into the competition. He did not disappoint, taking the lead in the second round, eventually throwing 76 feet, three quarters of an inch for a large victory over Corey Martin and Garland Porter. And the women's long jump, head coach for Tennessee, J.J. Clark, had high hopes for a sophomore, Tiano Madison, and she did not disappoint. In the preliminaries, on her third jump, she soared out 22 feet, 3 inches, to move into the top five all-time women long jumpers for the United States, equaling Carol Lewis, and she won by a huge margin in the women's long jump. In the women's high jump, defending champion both indoors and outdoors, Shante Howard, the junior from Georgia Tech, a 2004 Olympian, was clean to the bar, got to six, three and a half. She cleared that height on her second attempt and was able to hold off sophomore Gailey Niari of S Southern Methodist University for the victory, and she was jumping for joy afterwards. Coach Nat Page had to be pleased. Howard wins it over Niari and Sharon Day. And the women's shot, University of Miami senior Kimberly Barrett transferred to the school a year ago, and boy, does emotion count. 
Emotion can create energy, and she winds up the NCAA indoor champion, keeping the University of Miami in the hunt for the team title. So that brings you up to date on the field events. We're just now hearing that the Arkansas men's distance medley relay team has indeed been disqualified. So their 10 first place points will now go to Michigan. That's a big blow to the Arkansas team title hopes. Saina Med's 357 nine mile went for naught here as his teammates pick him up and no points for Arkansas. They went from being a decided favorite to a huge underdog. They've got 19 points in second place, but they have a tough road to hoe down the line. Possibly Michigan is one of the co-favorites now, Dwight. And on the women's side, a quintet of teams that will probably vie for the team title. And amongst those five teams, the Stanford Cardinal. And we will go back to earlier in the meet with the 5,000 meters. Alicia Craig getting some important points for them. She did. She wound up back in the pack a little bit. Did not win, but picked up five valuable points for Stanford and kept them in the hunt for the women's team title. Other schools to keep an eye on. Florida, LSU, the University of Miami, Tennessee, and Stanford, as we just mentioned. Five teams, and it may come down to the final women's event, the 4 by 400 meter relay to decide the women's team title. And isn't that the way it should be? When we come back, the men's saw first the ups. Sophomore Wallace Spearman sets not one, but two American and collegiate records in the 200. One in the heats, one in the finals. Now the downs. Peter Koske counted on for big points in the 5,000 meters for the Razorbacks. Falters badly. Then, in the men's distance medley relay, Saeed Ahmed wants so badly to bring his team home victorious, he moves out and impedes the progress of Nate Brennan of Michigan, disqualifying the Razorbacks and going from 10 points to zero. The NCAA championships in Coca-Cola, nothing like it. Next on the track, a highly anticipated men's mile run final. Here are the records, American record. Steve Scott has had it forever. 24 years, NCAA meet record. Another good one, Kevin Sullivan, who's an assistant coach at the University of Michigan. And the competitors in this race, most notably, Nick Willis, the Olympian from New Zealand, running for Michigan. And Saeed Ahmed of Arkansas, who was part of that distance medley relay debacle for Arkansas that lost them 10 points. There is Willis. He ran very well in Athens last summer. And Saeed Ahmed, who has some atoning to do. Well, night. I'm impressed with what these guys can do. He ran 4.036 last evening, did Ahmed to qualify for this event. Stepped in two hours later, ran 3.57.9 for the mile. Less than 24 hours later, trying to run close to four minute mile again. This John, is John, John Jefferson, Jefferson, one of the two twins, Sean, Sean and John, in their heat yesterday, they seem to just be cruising in. I couldn't believe this. They looked around, top three automatically qualified. There was another heat after this. There was no guarantee after the top three they'd advance to the final. I could not believe they eased back the way they did. Amazingly, they did get in. But, I mean, I would have I would have gone crazy if I was their coach. They made it in on a time qualifier. It's as though they knew that it was fast enough somehow. They did, however, make it into the final, perhaps saved a little bit of energy, and Indiana needs their points today. Two quick points. 402 during this indoor season at the NCAAs did not make it here to the NCAA championship. She had to run faster. And it took better than 405 to get into the final. Here's a quick look at Nick Willis, the junior from Michigan. Coach Ron Warhurst really counting on him to do well here. That's Brian Lindsay taking the early lead. A little bit of, uh, as they, the Brits would say, a little odgy bodgy there early on, as is oftentimes the case in a tightly packed mile field. Ten finalists. Lindsay leading over A.J. Saravic. Saravic in red from St. Francis. There is your, uh, what's that Notre Dame guy off the Saravic in the red from St. Francis College, not a track powerhouse. He couldn't break two minutes for 800 meters when he got to the school, said, Coach, I can do this. Has worked yeah, so hard and has run right on four minutes for the mile this year. Here he is in the NCAAs running in third place. Our hats off to St. Francis College. Brian Lindsay, the Brigham Young senior, continuing to lead the race. It's not a pedestrian pace, but certainly not the type of pace that you would see where you would expect a real fast time. Nick Willis, the very, very wily Kiwi from Michigan, back in the pack, biding his time, running his race plan, and the 
The crowd has nicely strung itself out. Seventh place, wearing the uh, maize and blue, as they call it, is Willis. And 59-7 for the first 400 meters. If this pace keeps up, we're going to have a sub-four-minute mile here. Ahmed, who lacks quite the blazing speed, in my opinion, as Willis, is in fourth place right now, staying a little close to the leaders. So the Brigham Young senior, Brian Lindsay, continuing to lead. Jonah Mayo of Arizona and, of course, of Kenya in second. Tom Lancashire from England and Florida State, the sophomore, in third. And Arkansas's Saeed Ahmed trying to atone for that debacle in the distance medley relay. He could have finished the race and maybe gotten at least eight points for the Razorbacks, but instead, by impeding Michigan, he ends up with nothing because of the disqualification. And by the 880-yard mark here, 202. So the pace has sagged a little bit. It's 5,500 people here, capacity crowd cheering. Them. Over 10,000 people here for these NCAA championships over a two-day period of time. This everybody. is going to be a very fast last, maybe 600 meters. Look how everybody... Challenge for second over Mile of Arizona. And now they're going Here, go. Here comes one of the Jefferson twins. And also from Notre Dame, Kurt Bennett starting to have to run wide. They're getting poised now. The big move is under. They're checking each other. Out. And there goes Benninger. He's a 358 miler. He was a 407 miler from Canada. And in two years, he's dropped his time down to a 358 indoor mile. Just a sophomore at Notre Dame. And there's Jefferson up there stalking him, one of the twins. And without much, not much fanfare, Nick Willis has moved into the hunt as well. He was in third, now bumped back to fourth. It's Sean Jefferson up in, in the third position now. But it is Benninger who is starting to push the pace, and Mayo trying not to let a gap develop. Watching his arm action, this is all out for Benninger in the sense he's going to try and hold this pace all the way. There's no ease back and kick. Benninger's trying a 600 meter kick. It's just an amazing push. He's not going to let up. One to go. 304 and three quarters of a mile. Mayo taking the lead. Here comes Willis stalking everybody. And Willis looks as comfortable as anyone. He has moved around. He's just making sure that no one gets in his way, that no one allows, uh, stops him from doing what he wants. And with a shift of gears, Willis goes into the lead. He barely even moved his arms. A a couple of quick late turnovers, and he has already put four or five meters on Mayo. And the man who last summer ran the equivalent of a 350 mile in Europe shows his blazing speed down the home stretch. Willis wins it easily over Sean Jefferson. Mayo winds up in third place, and Benninger holds on, I believe, for fourth. Sixth place, Saeed Ahmed. And that hurts the chances of the Razorbacks from Arkansas. Just three points for Ahmed when they really needed him to be in the top three. But Willis just took this field apart very easily, made, just made an incredible move on that backstretch. And he's got blazing speed. This young man who ran a 401 mile as a high schooler in New Zealand and came to school under coach Ron Warhurst at Michigan and set out to make the Olympic team for New Zealand last year and ran brilliantly in Europe. And there's the speed. You see him take the lead in the backstretch. He's got the 3,000 meters still to come. That's why he didn't want the lead till late in the race if he could get it. So Willis wins it, four flat 69, looking like a Sunday stroll. Sean Jefferson, one of the twins in Indiana, gets eight for Indiana, and then Jonah Mayo of Arizona holds on for third. All right, Nick Willis, how do you prepare for a race technically like this that ends up being a free-for-all? No, I was just, just trying to conserve as much energy as possible. We'll leave it till the end. I've got the 3,000 meters in 50 minutes, so... Now you guys are in contention for a top three finish. What's been said amongst you guys about what you need to do? Well, our dream is always to get on the podium as a team. It's nice to get an individual, but for the team, we'll be on, over the top. So if we get to the our coach will take us in spring break. So. All right, and what about the support from Ann Arbor? How do you get all these guys to come this? 50 people from Michigan driving all the way down 14 hours. I, I, I'm so blessed to be here in America from New Zealand. I'm just lucky. The NCAA Wrestling Championships is Saturday, March 19th at 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For a preview, visit NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Welcome back to Randall Tyson Track and Field Center. The next event on the track, the women's 800 meters. American record holder Nicole Teeter, an Olympian in 2004, NCAA meet record. Hazel Clark, also twice an Olympian in the 800 meters. And these eight finalists fought through the heats and are representing these schools here. Nisha Bernard-Thomas of LSU and Anita Denton of Arkansas, obviously part of the 
team situation, more so for LSU certainly than for Arkansas. The NCAA outdoor champion last year was runner-up indoors to Nicole Cook. Sad story there as far as Tennessee is concerned. Uh, Nicole Cook will touch on later. She's not here for this final. Anita Denton from Jamaica is given a good chance to win this race. She might be fighting it out with Nisha Bernard Thomas. I mentioned the fact that Tennessee lost 10 valuable points last Monday in practice, strained a hamstring muscle, did Tennessee's Nicole Cook, who set the collegiate record earlier this, this year indoors, and she was tried to get through the, the heats. Her, her ham, hamstring just wouldn't hold up, to make a long story short. And she fought almost all the way to the line trying to qualify for this final and even get a point for finishing, but she is out. So now it comes down to Nisha Bernard Thomas, the outdoor champion in NCAAs back last June. And then the proud favorite here in Arkansas, Anita Denton, the senior from Jamaica. She ran 201.96 seconds, uh, did Denton earlier in the race with Cook. And uh, I, I think you probably have to consider her, I would, maybe a favorite along with Nisha Bernard Thomas from LSU. And as she did in her heat, Ada Anderson, the junior from Iowa State, leading this race, a front runner, classic front runner, the Sarah Roman de Valle of Kansas State is in second place. And Anita Denton from Arkansas right there in third with Nisha Bernard Thomas right on her shoulder. And they're happy that Ada Anderson do the pacing duties because she runs a pretty honest pace. Beta Radzinska at the left of your screen. And to fight off the senior from LSU, Nisha Bernard Thomas. This pass is important. She's got to make it before that turner. She wastes a lot of energy, and Denton is able to fight her off. It's Anita Denton using all the strength that she can and tactically keeping Nisha Bernard Thomas out of this race. Now Thomas has got to swing wide. Does she have enough? It doesn't look like it. It's Anita Denton from Arkansas will get the 10. And Nisha Bernard Thomas hangs on for second. And it looked like Rudzinska from Akron finishing third, but a gutsy race for Anita Denton taking the lead and holding off Nisha Bernard Thomas. It's so hard in that situation to be the hunted. The hunter so much often or so often takes that situation, but Denton holds off Nisha Bernard Thomas, and then Beta Rudzinska of Akron finishes third. Let's take a look at some field events. This is Amy Lennon, the senior from Kansas. Three years ago, she set the meet record while competing for the University of Arizona. She comes back here to win with 14 feet, one and a quarter, now competing for the Jayhawks. A little brush on the way over, but it stays on the pegs, and Lennon wins it, 14, one and a quarter, on misses over Kate Soma of Washington and Connie Jairs of Arizona. Gisela Oliveira of Clemson comes from a country with great triple jumping history, Brazil. And she carries on that tradition. She's had two past third place finishes in NCAA competition. And she gets out 45 feet, one and three quarters of an inch to nail down the victory for Clemson. She wins over Erica McLean, the freshman from Stanford. How far can you throw a 20-pound ball out of a seven-foot diameter circle? She's from Trinidad, and she represented her country in the Olympic Games in Athens. Candace Scott, now a senior at the University of Florida, heaves the ball 79 feet three and three quarters of an inch. Congratulations to her and her throws coach, Larry Judge, on the great job he's done with the athletes down at University of Florida. A new NCAA record and a margin of victory of almost 10%. On the track, the men's 800 meters. And this should be a very competitive race and it has team implications with Nate Brandon, the two-time defending champion in the race, as well as James Hatch of Arkansas who got in here even though he was the 16th seed. And here comes Jonathan Johnson. He is tearing it up here, folks. Fast paced, solid race, gutsy guy, doesn't mind a hard pace. Look at the lead he has over Nate Brandon for the first 200 meters. Jonathan Johnson, a classic front runner, won the U.S. Olympic trials last July, was on the U.S. Olympic team running in Athens. That had to be great experience for him, but Brandon, as you said, Larry, back in sixth has dug himself a bit of a hole. Quite a sensational pace. They're going to run around 50 seconds here, somewhere around there. I see him slowing down now, but he certainly got control. Watch this first split. 51.47 seconds. Terrific time as James Hatch 
gets the crowd at its feet, moving up into second place for Arkansas. And Brannon has really got to make a move and go very, very wide. It looks like Jonathan Johnson all the way. The guy is all academic everything, and he is going for his NBA in Oklahoma, now in fourth place. One to go. 119 and change for 660 yards. Jonathan Johnson trying to win this thing wire to wire. We've seen it done before, but making a move on the back, it's Hicks. And he is a wild man. Look at the way he's twisting and turning. Johnson is, looks like he is out of it. Hicks on the outside. Kevin Hicks has the lead. And he steals the race, 146.9. Seven, and just like he did at the U.S. Nationals a couple of weeks ago, Kevin Hicks from Florida A&M, just a sophomore, beats a huge field here. Back stretch, about 100 meters to go, and look at the arm action going on right up front. Here comes Hicks on the outside, and look at the movement he makes by everybody off what was a searing pace, and James Hatch showing great courage, gets up for a terrific race. I didn't think he'd have that strong a race myself, but Florida A&M does proud by J Kevin Hicks, just a sophomore from Miami at Florida A&M. Terrific time. So Hicks win it. wins it. James Hatch, who barely got in this final, eight points for Arkansas. Sheridan Kirk of Auburn was third, and Nate Brannon of Michigan will get just five points for the Wolverines in fourth. Coming up, one of the brightest new stars in American track and field, Florida's soft sensation, Karen Clement, in the men's 400-meter dash. Next event on the track, the women's 400-meter dash. American record held by Diane Dixon and the NCAA meet record set last year by Sanya Richards of Texas, the Olympian, before she turned pro. Shauna Smith in lane three is a late scratch, so only three athletes will be contesting this final. And it should be a great race. In lane five, the Florida sophomore, Tiandra Pontine from St. Kitts and Nevis. And Pontine has run extraordinarily well. Her qualifying time was the fastest, 51.62 seconds. This could be her main competition, although you can't count out Hastings. Hazel Ann Regis has had a terrific career at LSU. The young lady from Grenada competed in the Olympic Games. We're back to Pontine now, and she likes to go out hard as her her modus operandi. As you look at Regis, realize that she is a great 200 meter runner, has her speed, and can run from the front or the back, whatever she chooses. Both of these young ladies made the semifinal round of the Olympic Games in Athens last summer. The time to beat by Stephanie Smith, the sophomore from South Carolina, in the first heat, 52.54 seconds. And look at Natasha Hastings. She's out. Oh, but she pulls up. It is now a two-woman race. And Hazel Ann Regis at a decided disadvantage as we see Hastings unable to get to her feet. And Tiandra Pontine takes advantage of being able to watch what Regis does through that first lap. Breaks for the pole in first. It is Pontine, but now Hazel Ann Regis becomes the hunter. Pontine has the fastest collegiate time this year, 51.47 seconds, a woman in the lead. Hazel Ann Regis, the senior, has a lot more experience on these boards, though. Can she hold off the veteran Regis? It's Pontine and Regis. Pontine and at the line. It looks from here like Teandra Pontine managed to hold off Hazel Ann Regis right at the line. And Dwight, 50.91 seconds, just Actually, nine one hundredths of a second off the collegiate record set last year by Sanya Richards when she was competing for Texas. What a great run. Harder to run from the lead, wire to wire, in a 400-meter indoor race like this. But Pontine does it. Look at the lean at the tape. The difference can't be more than one one-hundredth of a second with a finish like that. So Pontine gets a great time as well as a great victory over a wily veteran Hazel Ann Regis giving it everything she had trying to catch the young sophomore but Tiandra Pontine wins it in a fabulous time 50.91 and just one hundredth of a second separating first and second next up the men's 400 meter dash final the American and world record held by Michael Johnson the great one NCAA meet record Alain Francique 
three years ago from LSU. First two lanes are always open enough, 400 or 200 indoors. Daryl Williamson and Kelly Willie both have Olympic gold medals for the 4x4 relay in Athens. Teron Clement of Florida and Terry Gatson of Arkansas looking for some points for the Razorbacks. And there is the 19-year-old sophomore, Karan Clement. They refer to him as the real deal at the SEC Conference. Seven brilliant races just last weekend. He struggled a bit yesterday, but let's see what he can do today. And there is the man you were talking about, Darrell Williamson, who anchored the 4 by 400 meter relay to victory, got the gold medal in Athens, and just missed the Olympic team by one one-hundredth of a second in the 400 meters solo race. And you can't count out Kelly Willie. He ran in a heat in the Olympic Games and got himself a gold medal for the 4x400 relay as well. An outstanding 400 meter field. This might be the strongest event for America year in and year out, Dwight, on the international track and field scene, the 400 meters. And they're away cleanly. They will break for the pole after two full turns and Clement out a little bit slow. That is Kelly Willey in lane four going out for LSU. He also has an Olympic gold medal from that 4x400 relay in Athens. And it is so key who gets that pole position coming off of this turn. Darrell Williamson of Baylor well back. But here comes Karan Clement, the sophomore, who just shifted gears and took the pole position and just gapped Willey in about 10 meters. Clement in the lead in white has the second fastest 400 meter time in the world this year, 45.29 seconds. Let's see what he can do here now 50 meters to go for the leader Karen Clement of Florida and Clement blows this field away it is Clement it is really trying to hold off Gatson Clement will win it and Gatson comes up for very important important points Clement unofficially 44 57 which would be a world record and he shatters that world record Dwight shatters the record this season was about LaShawn Merritt's incredible time on this track a month ago. He turned pro two weeks before this championship and it let the air out of everyone. But then the sophomore, Karan Clement, comes back in the NCAA final and shatters Michael Johnson's world record at 400 meters indoors. That is a lot. To this race you were a picture of concentration did you have any idea this would be the result a world record definitely i've been looking very hard this year to get this record and i got it i'm so thankful <laughs> what specifically have you done that made the difference for you looking very hard in practice and stay positive that's it well congratulations take that lap <laughs> And Dwight, congratulations to Coach Mike Holloway, who's been coaching him along and bringing him along. I talked about it being the real deal and a sensational performance by six one hundredths of a second. He breaks the great Michael Johnson's world indoor record as Coach Holloway gives him a big hug from the University of Florida. Just 19 years old, he was only became a U.S. citizen last year. Karan Clement wins it with a world record. Terry Gatson, eight important points for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Coming up, the Lady Balls have three finalists in the women's 60-meter dash. That spells points, a step closer to a possible title. In the women's 3,000-meter run, this pretty much sums up the weekend for the Stanford Lady Cardinal. Sarah Bay, the junior, a strong favorite to win the race, goes down in the heat, leading with just a lap and a half to go. Colorado senior Renee Benetivier ends up winning the race. And Stanford's Katie Trotter manages to get up for fifth place and four points, pretty much putting pay to Stanford's chances in the team title. Benetivier wins it over Pritea and Cac Farrell. So after 15 events, Tennessee leads by five over Florida. Miami and Nebraska tied for third with 29. Time now for the women's 60-meter dash. The American record held jointly by Gail Devers and Marion Jones, both many-time Olympic gold medalists. 
And here's the field, notably three Tennessee volunteers, Lady Vols in this 60 meter final. Very important point opportunity for the Lady Vols. But the favorite probably in lane four, Fanna Ashby she of is, Auburn. She is right, and she has run the fastest time, 7.20 seconds of any collegian this year. She is from Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Auburn. And these are the three women that Dwight was referring to side by side, lanes five, six, and seven. And these women, if they run well, Tennessee is right in the hunt for the team title. If they have a bad race here of eight competitors, it could be all over for their chances. And on the outside, Priscilla Lopes of Canada, the runner-up in the hurdles after winning last year. Also a good enough sprinter to get in to this final. She's improved her sprint speed a lot. It could be a factor here. Very, very close at the finish line. I think this race will be. Ashby might be the favorite by just a few hundredths of a second. And a good start. Ashby out well in lane four. Fanna Ashby is dominating so far. No one's going to catch her. Fanna Ashby start to finish. The runner up in the 200. And she wins it easily here in the sixth. But the story may be Tennessee did well in this race. Certainly got second. We'll have to see about third. The blanket finish occurred right after second place. And let's see what Tennessee turned out here. Could be big, big points for head coach J.J. Clark and Carol Smith-Gilbert, who handles all the sprinters. Note Mashby, who gets out well. She has the slightly darker orange color of Auburn here. And by 30 meters into the race, she has about a foot lead over everybody and extends it at the finish line. And Toyan Olupona of Tennessee, a clear second-place finisher. But Fana Ashby, 7.18, an excellent time. She wins it. Toyan Olapuna of Tennessee and Tiana Madison of Tennessee, second and third big points for the Lady Vols. Let's get you caught up on the rest of the field events. The five event pentathlon junior Ashley Selig of Nebraska. This, her high jump performance, a clearance of five feet nine and a quarter, helps her win the title by 15 points over Amy Menlove of BYU. And the men's version, the seventh event heptathlon, senior Maury Smith from Auburn and Jamaica. He was 14th at the Olympics in Athens last summer, second at the outdoor NCAA in the decathlon. He wins by 79 points over defending champion Donovan Kilmartin as the Longhorns go second third. Auburn University shot for to Edis Elkasevich, the six foot seven giant from Croatia, who is an Olympian for his country, wins the men's shot for 64 feet, seven and a quarter inches. And in the men's high jump, Jesse Williams, the transfer from North Carolina State. He was fourth in the world juniors in high school, jumped seven three and a quarter. Here he's the only man to clear seven five for the Trojans. And Williams with a nice little brush, two close misses at seven six and a half, and he wins over Dusty Jonas and defending champion Andre Manson. Parents can be wonderful teachers. His dad, Jacques Udme, was the 1980 Olympic champion for the Soviet Union in the triple jump. And Giannis Udme gathers five valuable points for Arkansas in this event. But the winner was Eric Wilson, the man who won the long jump. And he powers out to a victory by over one foot over second place Rodrigo Mendez. Next up, the men's 60-meter dash final. American record held by Maurice Green. He has, also has the world record, NCAA meet record Marcus Brunson. Arizona State back in 1999. Here's the list of competitors. And all these guys that you see on the screen here can generally run the football 40, which you hear a lot about, between 4.2 seconds and maybe up to 4.3. And Brian Blanton, a junior from Oklahoma, he is the defending champion, although he did lose in his conference meet to the man in lane one, Dusty Stamer. And then Richard Adubabi of Florida, a freshman from Canada. Probably the two to watch in the middle of the track, as usual, the two fastest qualifying times. And Blanton looks at this as an opportunity to defend his title, but also avenge the loss that he suffered in his conference meet. The man in lane one, Dusty Stamer, a converted footballer, and finally managed to come out for track and field at Nebraska. Richard Adubobi of Florida, 
Just a freshman. A lot of young sprinters we're seeing at this NCAA meet. It certainly bodes well for the future of sprinting around the world. Yes. Very true, Dwight. And, you know, keep in mind one thing. A lot of pressure in these athletes. There's, there's electronic blocks here. And if one false start here, you're thrown out of the competition. Your team could lose as many as 10 points. And Blanton reacts well to the gun. Out in lane two, Demi Omoli of Wisconsin looks good. But it is Blanton who comes back. Brian Blanton, not the best start of everybody in the field, but really made a move at about 40 meters. 6.58 seconds, that's one one hundredth of a second off his all-time best. And down in lane one, the man that pushed him and beat him at his conference, Dusty Stamer of Nebraska, supplies surprise in second place. Adebobi winds up in third place. And you're right, Dwight. He get held back, really. It was Omoli who got the best start, got out. But top end speed belonged to Blanton in the middle of the track from Oklahoma. And look at him just begin to pull away from the rest of the field as Stamer winds up holding on. And look at Stamer to the right of the camera. Watch him come up. And he leans to the tape well and winds up getting second on the lean. This is a guy the coaches couldn't talk out to track and field until the 2004 season, but DeBrian Blanton avenges the loss to Stamer in the conference meet and repeats as champion of the 60-meter dash. He wins it over Stamer and Richard Adubabe. When we come back, we'll check in on the men's 3,000-meter run, an event that could determine the men's team title. The NCAA Wrestling Championships is Saturday, March 19th at 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For a preview, visit NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. The women's team title was up for grabs going into this, the final event, the 1,600-meter relay. This is the second of three sections, the two main competitors, Tennessee and Florida. And here comes the anchor exchange. It's all about time. This is all uh, an all-out race, not just to win here, but you've got to beat the other women's teams that are being contested in other heats here. Courtney Champion of Tennessee, who's also scored points in the 60 meters earlier, anchoring for the Lady Vols. Just cruising along, great 60 meter, 200 meter capability. And for, for Baylor, that's Angel Perkins, but Florida well back. And they really needed to finish ahead of Tennessee and have Tennessee do poorly in order to have a chance at the team title. Tennessee appears to be well within themselves. Florida, a good 15 yards or so behind Tennessee. This is beginning to look like it is all Tennessee's day. And this performance may wind up winning them the NCAA title. Coming down the home stretch. Courtney Champion of Tennessee trying to hold off Angel Perkins, and she does so. The time, however, is not better than the first section time, and we'll have to see how that all works itself out. But I think, Dwight, this is going to make the difference here. 331 is a good time. Only a few other teams are going to be ahead of them, but none of those teams that can win have a chance to get the team title away from Tennessee. This decides Tennessee's team title, winning the NCAA women's Let's title. Down. Let's pray. Let's pray. In case you just join us, our Coca-Cola men's storylines are the downs of Arkansas. No team digs out of a hole better than the Razorbacks. Then, in the men's distance medley relay, Saeed Ahmed wants so badly to anchor his team to victory that he impedes the motion of Michigan's Nate Brannon, taking the Razorbacks from 10 points for the win to zero points on a DQ. The NCAA championships and Coca-Cola, nothing like it. We join the men's 3,000 meters with two laps remaining. This is a pivotal race for Arkansas and Wisconsin. Chris Zielinski and Matt Tegenkamp had the lead here, but earlier on it was Ryan Hall of Stanford forcing the pace. As you see, Coach John McDonald urging everybody on. This is a key moment of the race. 4.13.5 for the first mile. Things sagged a little bit after that, but once the Wisconsin runners took over and Peter Koske, the sophomore from Arkansas, kept up the chase, the pace picked up here as we approach one lap to go. Crucial that he stay in position here for Arkansas to be able to wind up the victor in this NCAA championships again for Coach John McDonald and his staff. 
And look at John McDonald urging on Peter Koske, telling him, go, go. And you can see that Matt Tegenkamp, the senior from Wisconsin, starting to drop off the pace. And that's just charging up Peter Koske as he passes in the final turn. He doesn't have enough room to catch Zelensky. But Koske, eight important points for the Razorbacks. Zelensky wins it, Tegenkamp will be third. As we watch the rest of the runners crossing the line, it is Adam Perkins of Arkansas, the sophomore, getting three more points by finishing sixth. That's 11 for Arkansas. That clinches the title for John McDonald, his 40th overall, 18th indoors in this incredible career. I've done this event many, many times, Dwight, as you see the two of them who scored there, and they're going through the, the pig suey cheer here with over 5,000 people joining in the chant. But I don't remember a team coming back with such adversity to be dis disqualified, losing 10 points, and having probably a sure six to eight points in the sprints and Tyson Gay being lost, and coming up this strongly at the end as Koske runs down Tegenkamp and almost comes within really three or four steps of the victory, and McDonald celebrates. You think he's not excited about his 40th championship? The irony, this is the 40th anniversary of the first night of the inaugural Indoor NCAA Championships. What a great moment for John McDonald and his Razorbacks after despair last night when they were disqualified from the distance medley relay. And in all this we've lost, sophomore Chris Zielinski of Wisconsin did win the race. He certainly did. You know, after 40 of this, if this was football, they changed the state logo from a Razorback to a leprechaun for the man from Ireland. Chris Zielinski wins it for Wisconsin, but Peter Koske makes the difference for Arkansas. Matt Tegenkamp, the sophomore from Wisconsin, finishes third. Our Pontiac High Performance Moment is pretty much a no-brainer. It's the world record in the 400 meters by sensational Florida sophomore, Karon Clement. The Lady Vols of Tennessee win it by 10 points over Florida and the first national championship title for J.J. Clark at Tennessee and he's down with Leslie Maxey. J.J. <laughs> Clark, you're very young to this profession. When you looked at this meet, when did you feel you guys could win and when did you know and how did you more importantly convey that to your ladies? Well, I knew we had the chance of winning before we came into the meet and then Nicole Cook got injured on Sunday. I said, uh-oh, we have to step up. And it was not easy, but they did a great job. They did, they did. So let's get one of your athletes in here. You guys, what is it like for you standing shoulder to shoulder with one another in, in a, an event that usually is individual? How can you describe this team championship? This was everybody stuck together, everybody put it together, put the pieces together, and everybody was warriors today, and we're just happy, and we thank, I thank all y'all. All right, let's hear it for the Lady Balls. It's getting awfully crowded up in the rafters at Randall Tyson Track and Field Center. Arkansas garners its 40th overall NCAA title with a 10-point victory over Florida. They didn't make it look all that easy. And Leslie Maxey is down on the infield with winning coach John McDonald. All right. Coach McDonald, this is your 18th indoor 40th overall championship. I know it's hard to pinpoint one, one pivotal moment, Kate, but can you sh tell us one time that crystallized this team's entire effort over this championship? Well, it's, this one was very sweet. It had been the 40th, and we had some adversity last night and the kids came back today, it was fantastic. I, something you just dream about. So the 40th Indoor Championships comes to a close, and how appropriate for Arkansas coach John McDonald. It's his 40th national coaching title. And now, Tennessee coach J.J. Clark wins his first. We salute you and the hard work of your athletes. Well done. For Larry Rawson, Leslie Maxey, and our statistician Walter Murphy, I'm Dwight Stones. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.